Island Gigantism has produced some of the most terrifying and some of the strangest animals humanity, and the earth for that matter, has seen. But mainly, it just takes normal animals and drives them to freakish sizes. One of the most important groups on islands is birds, and so one of the most common island giants are birds. Because they can fly that unbelievably impenetrable barrier, getting to the island is a little less of a worry for them. The most famous bird to go giant on an island is the dodo. The dodo's closest relatives still alive are pigeons, but dodos are much bigger than their mainland counterparts and would have stood around one metre tall. They were endemic to Mauritius, an island to the east of Madagascar where they survived on a varied diet mainly composed of fallen fruit, nuts, seeds and bulbs, as well as some evidence for them eating shellfish, and they lived without fear of predators. That is, until humans arrived. The first recorded dodo was in 1598, and by 1662 human activities had led them to extinction. However, they have managed to be reconstructed in remarkable detail due to the many written accounts, drawings and sub-fossil remains. There is even a preserved head that was first described in 1656 and helped provide the evidence to establish the dodo's relation to pigeons. Dodos are dwarfed, however, by the elephant bird, the largest at which stood at over 3 metres tall. Just their eggs would have weighed 10 kilograms and were 120 times the size of modern chicken eggs. The giants were native to Madagascar and they're related to modern kiwis, but as the rainforest fossil record in Madagascar is so poor, their lifestyle remains relatively unknown. Due to human activity, they had been made extinct by the 17th century. Theories for the exact reason for this vary, but it may have been the incredible size of their eggs that contributed hugely to their downfall. Remains of eggshell have been found with evidence of human fires, indicating that eggs offered an easy meal, and to be fair, they would have made one fat omelette. And it's not just flightless birds that got massive. Hast's eagle could have weighed up to 15 kilograms and is the largest eagle to ever have existed. It lived in New Zealand alongside the island's earliest human settlers. The eagle evolved to grow so big in order to hunt the equally massive mower using their formidable talons, and unlike most giant birds, we know they could fly, and sites of muscle attachment found on its remains show it was a flapping bird, as opposed to most eagles which glide. Unfortunately, Hast's eagle went extinct around 1400, as Polynesian settlers also hunted the mower and eventually drove it to extinction, leaving the eagle with nothing to eat. Fun fact about New Zealand? Until humans arrived, there was no land mammals except bats, which demonstrates pretty well the strange ecosystems these giants evolved in. But birds aren't the only giant ones. One of the most famous examples of island gigantism, and one we still see today, is what happens when tortoises get on an island. The reason for this is thought to be that once a tortoise gets big, it can travel longer for food and water, and live longer without them. And it's an evolutionary pull so strong tortoises have got big three separate times. Most well known is the Galapagos Islands, but there's also a completely unrelated population on the Seychelles, and the Massarine Islands once held a population until they went extinct in the 17th century. All of these tortoises are huge versions of their smaller relatives on the mainland. Finally, island gigantism even affects invertebrates, the strangest of which is the pill millipede. Named so because when threatened, they can roll up into a ball normally around the size of a grape, but on Madagascar, these balls are known to reach around the size of an orange. They are also the only millipedes known to produce sound, and they look strange. Mainly they just look strange. But why do islands make giants? There are several reasons, and the answer is probably a mixture of them all. On the mainland, many herbivores evolve a small size, as it allows them to hide from predators easier. However, large carnivores are rarely present on an island. This is attributed to a mixture of it being difficult for them to disperse over water and reach an island in the first place, and the simple fact that an island may be too small to support a population of large carnivores. Without this evolutionary pressure to be small, the advantage of being big becomes more prominent. Mainly, that big animals find it much easier to go for extended periods of time without food or water. Islands also tend to be free of larger herbivores, initially, as they also can't disperse over water, and so the large herbivore niche remains empty until island gigantism fills it. Finally, island populations tend to be very insular, and it's easier to defend a territory when you're aggressively huge. So there you go! Evolution driving species we know and love to huge proportions in response to the most basic of needs, food and water. The opposite of island gigantism is island dwarfism, and a video will be coming out on that very soon. 
If it's already uploaded, I'll put an annotation here, as well as the other video in this series coming soon, on the island of Flores, which was once inhabited by a population of hobbits.